Have you ever wondered if there's friction in the seemingly endless void of space? It's an intriguing question that may not have crossed your mind before. We're all familiar with friction here on Earth. It's what keeps our cars from sliding on the roads, our shoes from slipping on the floor, and it's even the reason we can strike a match. But what about space? That vast, almost infinite expanse that exists beyond our planet's atmosphere. Is there such a thing as cosmic friction? It's an idea that might seem counterintuitive. After all, space is often described as a vacuum, a place devoid of the air and matter we associate with friction here on the ground. Yet the universe is a place of endless wonder and often defies our earthly intuitions. So, let's journey together into the cosmos and delve into this captivating question. In this video, we'll explore the fascinating concept of friction in space. Before diving into the cosmic details first, we need to understand what friction is. Friction in the simplest sense, is a force that opposes motion. Imagine you're sliding a book across a table. The book slows down and eventually stops, right? That's friction at work, it's like a silent, invisible hand that's always trying to slow things down. But what causes friction? Well, even surfaces that appear smooth to our eyes are actually filled with microscopic hills and valleys. When two surfaces come into contact, these tiny imperfections lock into each other. This creates resistance when one object tries to move over another. The rougher the surface is, the greater the friction. Friction isn't just a killjoy for sliding books though, it's crucial for many everyday activities. When you walk, friction between your shoes and the ground prevents you from slipping. When you write with a pencil, friction between the graphite and paper allows you to leave a mark. Without friction we'd be slipping, sliding and unable to get much done. Now, friction comes in different flavors. There's static friction that keeps an object at rest from moving. It's the force you must overcome to start sliding that book. Then there's kinetic or sliding friction that acts on an object that's already in motion. It's less than static friction, which is why it's easier to keep the book moving once you've started. Then there's rolling friction, experienced when an object rolls over a surface, like a bowling ball down the alley. It's generally less than sliding friction, making rolling an efficient way to move objects. And lastly, we have fluid friction, which happens when an object moves through a fluid, either a liquid or a gas. It's what you feel when you try to walk in water or when the wind resists your umbrella. Now all these types of friction hinge on one key element, contact between surfaces. Remember that, because it's going to be important when we talk about space. Now that we understand friction, let's apply this knowledge to the vast universe. Imagine sliding on a frictionless surface, that's essentially what space is like. Now let's delve into the absence of friction in outer space. To understand this we need to comprehend the basic definition of friction. Friction as we know it on Earth requires two surfaces to rub against each other, and a medium through which this interaction can occur. Most commonly, this medium is air. But here's the catch. Space is a vacuum. It's devoid of any medium like air or water. There's nothing in space through which friction can occur. It's like trying to light a fire underwater. The necessary conditions just aren't there. This doesn't mean things don't move in space, but the way they move is quite different from how we perceive motion on Earth. Consider a spaceship, for instance. Once it's thrust into space, it continues to move in the direction of the thrust until another force acts upon it. It doesn't slow down or stop as it would on Earth due to friction. This is because, in the vast emptiness of space, there's no friction to slow it down. This absence of friction in space plays a crucial role in the movement of celestial bodies. Planets, for example, keep orbiting around their respective stars due to the balance between gravity and their inertia. Without friction to counter their motion, they continue their cosmic dance, year after year, millennium after millennium. It's also why astronauts find it incredibly challenging to move in space. Without friction, every action has an equal and opposite reaction, and it's harder to control one's movements. It's a bit like being on the slipperiest ice rink you can imagine but in all directions and all the time. So, in the traditional sense, there is no friction in space. The seemingly infinite expanse of the cosmos is, in essence, a frictionless environment where the rules of motion we're so accustomed to on our home planet simply don't apply in the same way. But wait, space isn't as frictionless as it might seem. While we've established that the classic definition of friction, born of two surfaces rubbing against each other, is virtually non-existent in the great cosmic expanse, there are certain exceptions to this rule. Let's dive into the world of these exceptions. Imagine space as an ocean with sparse particles instead of water. 
These particles, though extremely sparse, are still present. As spacecraft move through space, they have to push these particles out of the way. This action creates a type of friction, commonly known as drag. Drag in space? You might find it surprising. But, yes, it's a reality. Although it's significantly less than what we experience on Earth, it's still there. This drag can slowly but surely affect the trajectory and speed of objects in space. Think of satellites orbiting our planet. Over time, the drag from these sparse particles can cause them to slow down and lower their orbit. If not corrected, this could eventually lead to the satellite re-entering Earth's atmosphere, burning up in the process. Spacecraft, venturing beyond our planet's orbit, also feel this drag. It's a force they must account for when calculating their paths and speeds. Some of the fuel reserves on a spacecraft are set aside specifically to combat this friction-like force, but drag isn't the only exception. There's also something called gravitational friction. This is the friction-like force that occurs between galaxies. As galaxies move their gravitational fields interact, creating a friction-like force that can slow their motion. So what we've learned is that while the vacuum of space is largely devoid of the type of friction we're familiar with on Earth, it's not completely friction-free. There are forces at play that behave in a friction-like manner, affecting the movement of objects in space from satellites to galaxies. Despite the vacuum, space isn't completely devoid of friction-like forces. In the next scene, we'll delve into the implications of these cosmic frictions. Stay tuned! So, what does this mean for our exploration of the cosmos? Well, buckle up, space enthusiasts, because we're about to dive into the fascinating implications of cosmic friction. Firstly, let's consider space travel. The absence of friction in space enables spacecraft to move freely once they've escaped the Earth's atmosphere. This means that a spacecraft doesn't need a constant push to keep moving, unlike a car on the highway. However, there are subtle forces at play in the cosmos, like solar wind and cosmic radiation, which can act similarly to friction. These forces can slightly alter the course of a spacecraft over long distances. Hence, when scientists plan space missions, they must account for these forces to ensure the spacecraft reaches its destination accurately. Secondly, let's look at the operation of satellites. Satellites orbiting the Earth are also subject to these friction-like forces. For instance, the solar wind can cause a drag effect on satellites, similar to air resistance on Earth. This can slowly change a satellite's orbit over time. So, satellite operators must periodically correct the satellite's course to keep it in the desired orbit. This is usually done by small thruster engines on the satellite. Finally, understanding cosmic friction, or the lack thereof, has profound implications for our understanding of the universe. It has helped us refine our laws of physics and deepen our knowledge of cosmic phenomena. For example, the observation that galaxies rotate faster than can be explained by gravity alone led to the hypothesis of dark matter. This mysterious substance doesn't interact with light or matter, but its gravitational effects can be observed. Therefore, its existence is inferred from the unexplained, friction-like effects on the rotation of galaxies. In conclusion, while space is often considered a frictionless environment, the reality is a bit more complex. However, these complexities only make our cosmic journey more intriguing. Understanding friction, or the lack thereof in space, is key to our cosmic journeys. To sum up our journey through the cosmos, we've unearthed the intriguing truth that friction, as we know it on Earth, doesn't exist in outer space. This is because friction requires two surfaces to rub against each other, and in the vacuum of space, there are no surfaces and no air to provide resistance. However, as we've learned, there are exceptions to this rule. Cosmic dust and space debris can interact with spacecraft, creating a kind of space friction. It's not the same as what we experience on Earth, but it's a form of resistance nonetheless. These revelations have profound implications affecting everything from the design of spacecraft to our understanding of the universe. The absence of friction in space allows celestial bodies to move freely, and understanding this concept helps us better comprehend the cosmic dance that unfolds in the vastness of the universe. Next time you gaze at the stars, remember, there's more to space than meets the eye, including the fascinating concept of friction.